Shalom, shalom, most high Christ bless. Captain Hannah and I are from Israel United in Christ, coming to bring you the 15 minute with the captains. I'm here with Soldier Kononiah, Shalom Israel, most high Christ bless. And we're going to bring you some lessons. Hoping you get uh, edified uh, by these lessons, all right? We're going to start off with the book of Romans, 15, verse 4. The book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written before, aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Read that again. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. We talking about things that are written aforetime. He think about things that happened in the past with our forefathers. The things that's written in this Bible, God left that for example for us. Now in these days to understand and recognize that he is the God of Israel. So he said things written aforetime were written for our learning. When, when he written it? For right now, in these last days, for us to come back and understand what he did for the forefathers and what he going to do for us as well. Go ahead. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Through we, through the Israelites having patience. Patience, patience, patience. And comfort of the scriptures. Us going into this Bible, bring it out what he did for the forefathers, for we can have that strength right now in these last days to keep going, to keep the faith, and keep this truth moving. So I'm going to go to Genesis chapter 18. And the name of the class is the Most High defendeth his people Israel. Genesis 18, verse 20. The book of Genesis chapter 18, verse 20. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now, and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, mm -hmm. which is come unto me. And if not, I will know. Where you at? Uh, that was verse 21. All right, read it again. Verse 20. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. So that's what happened with the Most High. He said, because the cry, not of Sodom and Gomorrah in the whole, because that's five cities. Sodom and Gomorrah is five cities altogether. You had Zorah, you had a couple of more cities there. But the cry of the city was who? Lot and his family was there. Lot and his family was there. I'm going to say it again. The forefather Lot with his family was there in Sodom and Gomorrah. So he said, since the cry of the city, go ahead. Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, mm -hmm. I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me. And if not... I will know. So he go, he said, the Most High said, he going to send his angels there to see what's going on. I mean, he said he already knew. Lot was there crying because he seen homosexuality. He seen all this perverseness, lasciviousness, this lewdness going on all throughout them cities. So he said, I'm going to send the angels down there because I heard the cry of it. And I'm going to send the angels down there. Why? Because the sins have reached the heaven like they said in uh, Revelation 18 before. So he said, I'm going to go down and see. When the Most High go down to see about something, he's not playing no games. He's going down to destroy. So the Most High was going down there to see what was going on. The Most High do hear our cries and he do defend us. Read. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew, drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? So he asked, God, are you going to destroy the righteous? Because he know Lot and his family was there. Are you going to destroy the righteous with the wicked? No. The Most High was just letting them know, I'm going down there and I'm going to take care of the wicked and I'm going to get the righteous to safety. I'm going to pull the righteous out to safety. I'm, I, I ain't got time to go through it all, but I'm going to jump to Genesis 19 and 1. We're going to see what happened in Genesis 19 and 1. This is correlating with the story that we're talking about here, about the cries of Sodom and Gomorrah. Go ahead. The book of Genesis, chapter 19, verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and bowed himself to his face toward the ground. So Lot was sitting at the gate. Lot didn't even want to be around their wickedness. He got... Lot was, he didn't want to be around the lewdness and perversion. Not like now, you see the gate parades, you see the, uh, the, the lewdness with them running around, shirts off, half naked out there, partying, men kissing men, women kissing women. Lot didn't want to be in there around the midst of it, so Lot was sitting at the gate. And when he was sitting at the gate, he seen the two angels coming, and he bowed his face down to the ground. Go ahead. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house. 
and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay. But we will abide in the street all night. So they said, nah, we're going to sit there and we're not going to go and get comfortable. We're going to turn around and we're going to go and stay in these streets. And uh, they was coming to do uh, some business for the Most High. They was coming to handle a business for the Most High. They was on a special mission for the Most High to destroy the fire city. So go ahead and read. And he pressed upon them greatly. And they turned in unto him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast. And did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. So the angels, he baked them unleavened bread, and they did eat. You understand? So we don't know who we're dealing with in these streets. That's why we got to respect one another. That's why we got to have care and concern for one another. Because you don't know who you're talking to. You don't know who the person next to you really is. You understand? I'm going to give you an example. Give me that in Hebrew 13, 13 and 1. Hebrew 13 and 1. Because we don't know who we're dealing with. The most I send these men down here, and he cooking for them. And he said they're they, they going to eat. He made them unleavened bread, and they was going to eat. So uh, read 13 from 1 to 3. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 1. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. That's the point. I mean, I, you ain't got to go no further. That's the point right there. Some of us entertain angels unaware. We don't know who this brother is. We don't know who this sister is. We don't know who these people around, uh, uh, around us are. Some people might be Abraham, Jeremiah, Isaac. We don't know. That's why we got to have care and concern. That's why you got to keep the brotherly love. That's why you got to stay in the spirit for the most I can see you and see you uh, doing the good works and be able to defend you in the end. You understand? Because there's no game with the most high. The most high said we entertain angels underwear. Read that one or two again. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 1. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. So some of us entertain angels unaware. Some of us really ran into angels and talking to angels from God, like Ruel, Uriel, when he was talking to Ezra. You got many different with Tobiah. You had Ruel. You understand? So my point is you got many different angels. And the most I send them down here to this earth, and we don't never know who they are. That's why you gotta carry yourself in a. Um, that's why you gotta carry yourself in a um, respectful manner at all times, because you never know who you talking to. You never know who the Most High sent to you to help you, send to you to test you, send to you to see how you are gonna react to this person. You understand? That's why you gotta keep the brotherly love. Let's go to um, Psalms twenty and one. So we gotta entertain. Uh, we gotta entertain angels on the way. We gotta respect one another because we don't know who is who in this war. But God do defend His people. He sent angels down in here to defend us at all times. Trust me. As long as you trust in the Lord, that's what he said. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. In Psalms 3 and 5. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 20, verse 1. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. Thy na the name of God of Jacob defend thee. Uh oh, you said the Lord do what? Read that again. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. So the Lord hear you in the day of trouble. The Lord do hear us in the day of trouble. Go ahead. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. So the Lord, the name of a God of Jacob defend thee. You understand? The God of Israel defend us. Go ahead and read. Send thee help from the sanctuary. So he send us help. He always send us help. He hear us and he send us help. Go ahead. And strengthen thee out of Zion. And he going to strengthen us out of Zion. He always send us help. Zion is the people before us the place. Jerusalem is the people before us the place. You understand? You got to realize the most high is the only God up there, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he made a promise to us that he will defend us and he will keep his promise to the end. But you know what's wrong with us? We don't keep our promise. We don't stay in tune with the Most High. We go away from him. Let me give you an example. Give me Isaiah 59 and 1. Give me Isaiah 59 and 1. I'm going to give you an example how we go away from the Most High and the Most High don't go away from us. In our wickedness, he still have mercy on us. And us being brothers and sisters, we don't have mercy on this, uh, uh, each other. But in our wickedness, the Heavenly Father forgive us and have mercy on us. Give me that in Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. The book of Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Read that again. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. So he said his hand is not short where he cannot save. 
The most high hand is not sure. We, he can save anybody in any situation as long as we cry and call upon him. Go ahead. Neither his air heavy that it cannot hear. So if we pray, and we pray not amiss, if we pray sincerely, the most I hear you. He'll come help you. But look what happened to us. Go ahead. Verse 2. But your iniquities. But with your what? Your iniquities. But your iniquities. Your iniquities. Go ahead. Have separated between you and your God. So that's what keep you from the heavenly father. You go and turn your back on him. You going out there and doing something wrong. He here to love you and protect you. But when you go away from him, that's when your problems start. That's when he take his hands from around you. That's when you uh, stop getting the protection you was getting when you stop caring about him and stop doing his law, and your commandments that he commanded us to do. Read. And your sins have hid his face from you, and he will not hear. And that's what that's the only time he saw. Um, that's the only time he turned his back from us. That's the only time he don't hear us when we be in the midst of sin and do not repent. When we don't repent for our sins, that's when he stopped hearing us. But if you slip and do something and you repent for it, the most I hear you. He said he will abundantly pardon in Isaiah 55 and 7. So you got to realize that, y'all. God is here to defend you. God is here with you. But you got to make sure you stay with him. Let me get um, Exodus 14, 19 and 20. Exodus 14, 19 and 20. I'm just going over some things to show you that how the most high is with us at all times. The book of Exodus, chapter 14, verse 19. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel. The angel of God did what? Which went before the camp of Israel. Uh -huh. Removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the, crowd, the cloud went, bef went from before their face uh -huh. and stood behind them. Uh -huh. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. So when is this? This is the time we came out of Israel. This is the time we came out of Israel, and he was in a cloud. He was in a pillar above us. He gave us light in the night, and he gave us shade in the daytime when it was real hot. You understand? This is the pillar in a cloud where he followed us when we was about to go through the Red Sea, and he went in front of us, and then he turned around and went behind us when the Egyptians were on our back. So read 20 again. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. Uh huh. And it was, and it was a cloud of, and darkness to them. But it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the night. So the Most High say it was a light to us, but it was darkness for them. You understand? That was the Most High. In the, I mean, that was Christ in the clouds. He did to protect us. He went before us, and then when he see them catching up to us, he went behind us and slow them down. Mm. And you can read different, uh, different scriptures where he's shooting the lightning bolts and things like that to slow them down. So this, is, this history is heavy. The Most High always defended us. The Most High always be with us, as long as we with him. As long as we are applying and, 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 and teaching and keeping these laws and commandments. You understand? In sincerity. I'm just going through a couple of these scriptures to show you how the Most High all through the Bible. I might have to make a part two. How the Most High all through the Bible protect us and defend us. Judah 5 and 20. We're going to see how the Most High defend us in our walk. The book of Judas, chapter 5, verse 20. Now therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people, and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin, and let us go up, and we shall overcome them. Uh huh. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by, lest their Lord defend them. Lest who? Lest their Lord defend them. Lest their Lord, the Israelites' Lord, defend us. Go ahead. And their God be for them. And we become a reproach before all the world. So that's what happened. The Most High, this was a, uh, 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 Halavanes, a governor, trying to come and destroy us. But this Ammonite was warning him, if they keeping their laws like they're supposed to, their God going to defend them. But if they breaking their laws of their God, he will not defend them. So long as we, like I said, long as we keeping the law, statute, commandments, in sincerity, and, 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 and really fulfilling what the Most High said for us to do, he will be there to protect us and defend us at all costs. Let me get Second Ezra 13 and 47. 2 Ezra 13 and 47. Let's see some more protection we was getting from the Heavenly Father. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 13, verse 47. 47 to 50. Yes, sir. The highest shall stay the springs of the stream again that they may go through, 
Therefore sawest thou the multitude with peace. Mm -hmm. But those that be left behind of thy people are they that are found within thy borders. Mm -hmm. Now when he destroys the multitude of the nations that are gathered together, he shall defend his people. What was he going to do? He shall defend his people. He shall defend his people. He shall defend his people. Who God people? The Israelites. From Genesis already to Revelation, his people. Go ahead. Now when he destroyeth the multitude of the nations that are gathered together, he shall defend his people that remain. Mm -hmm. And then shall he show them great wonders. That's how he's going to show them great wonders, because he's going to be destroying our enemies for us. He's going to be fighting for us. Let me get that. I'm going to show you. Let me get that in uh, 2 Maccabee 10, uh, 1025. How the Most High fight for us. As long as we keeping his Lord's Chapter commandments and praying to him, how the Most High fight for us. Second, uh, second Maccabees, yep. Yes, sir. Ten. The book of Second Maccabees, chapter ten, verse twenty-five. Yeah. But when he drew near, they they that they that were with the Maccabees turned themselves to pray unto God, and sprinkled earth upon their heads. So what happened? Nicanor was after us. Nicanor was after us, and he was coming to kill us. So uh, Judah Maccabee and the family spread um, they spread uh, ashes on their head, earth on their head. Go ahead. And girded their loins with sackcloth, uh -huh. and fell down at the foot of the altar, uh -huh. and besought him to be merciful to them, and to be an enemy to their enemies, and an adversary to their adversary, as the Lord declareth. Uh -huh. So after the prayer, they took their weapons, and went on further from the city. And when they drew near to their enemies, they kept by themselves. Uh -huh. Now the sun being newly risen... They joined both together, the one part having together with their virtue, their refuge, also unto the Lord for a pledge of their success and victory. The other side, making their rage, making their rage leader of the battle. Uh huh. But when the battle waxed strong. So when daytime came, they were starting to ready to gear up to go battle. Some of them was making their rage the battle. Oh, come on, let's go fight. Let's go get them. Because they already they already determined that they was going to come destroy Israel. So Judah Maccabee, he, he prayed to the Most High. And then he put courage in these men to go out there and fight. Because he knew the forefathers was going to protect them. He knew the Heavenly Father was going to protect us. That's why he, they made they raise the battle. So as the fight started getting hot, go ahead, uh, verse 29. But when the battle waxed strong, there appeared unto the enemies from heaven five comely men upon what, horses. What appeared from heaven? Five comely men upon horses. Most High sent his angels down to protect Judah Maccabee and the men fighting for the rights of the sanctuary, fighting for our people, fighting for our families. Go ahead. With bridles of gold. And two of them led the Jews. So two of them is in front. Go ahead. And took Maccabees betwixt them. Um, number two took them between them. Two in front, two in the middle. Go ahead. And covered him on every side. And one was in back. Go ahead. With their weapons and kept him safe. They kept Judas Maccabees safe. In this battle, he, they kept him safe. They came down with horses with gold all around. All You can imagine this. Gold all around the horses and the angels, you know, their garments had to be bad. You know, they probably had all type of shiny, ruby, warlike material on we never seen in our life. That's how you could tell they were different. He said five comely men came out of heaven coming to fight. Go ahead. But shot arrows and lightning. Read 30 again at the top. And took Maccabeus betwixt them. So they had Maccabeus in the middle, two in front, two at the side of him and one in back. Go ahead. And covered him on every side with weapons. And kept him safe. And they kept him safe. Nobody could shoot no arrow, nothing at him. They were protecting him and the men around him. Go ahead. But shot arrows and lightnings against the enemy. So they riding and they shooting arrows and boom, 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 boom. Like we you call them today, like flash grenades. Blowing up in the people's face and they couldn't see. Go ahead. So that being confounded with blindness and full of trouble, they were killed. So being confounded with blindness, the most I sent the angel down there to fight with Judas Maccabee. Go ahead. And there were slain of footmen 20,500. 20,500 men was killed at that time. If you read up, there was only 3,000 of them with Judas Maccabee. 25, he said, uh, 20? 20, 
20,500 was slain, right? Go ahead. And 600 horsemen. And 600 horsemen. And 600 horsemen. You understand? They killed them. The angels came down and fought for us. Because Judah Maccabee and them prayed to the Heavenly Father as he did with the four of us. As we started this out, he said things written the four times are written for our learning. Let me get a couple more. Let me get Deuteronomy. I'm going to go to Deuteronomy 31. This is good stuff right here. Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy 31, uh, verse 3. Sure. This is some good stuff right here. How the Most High come in and fight for his people. As long as he's praying, as long as we're applying, the Most High is here to defend us. Go ahead. This is the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 31, verse 3. The Lord thy God, he will go over before thee, and he will destroy these nations. So the Most High, when we came out of Egypt, he said he's going to go before us to destroy the nations that was there. Go ahead. He will destroy these nations before, from before thee, and thou shalt possess them. And Joshua, he shall go over before thee, as the Lord has said. Uh-huh. And the Lord shall do unto them as he did to Shiloh and to Og kings of the Amorites, and unto the land of them whom he destroyed. So the Most High went before, uh, the Most High sent an angel before them and destroyed them people that was there, for he could give us a land he promised us. Go ahead. And the Lord shall give them up before your face, and that ye may do unto them according unto all the commandments which I have commanded you. Uh -huh. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God he is it that doth go with thee. That's why you're supposed to depend on the Lord today. That's why your faith is supposed to be in the Most High today. He said, he said, vengeance belong to him. So we're not supposed to go out there and try to create our own thing. The Most High will defend us. If you somebody doing you wrong, if you being done wrong, if something happening in your life, you're supposed to be, depend on the Heavenly Father to come and help you out. You're supposed to depend on the Heavenly Father to come help you out in your situation. Because the Most High always helped us out. The Most High always was there to uh, fight for us, to fight with us. The Most High always was there to defend us, as long as we keeping His Lord's chapter commandments. You understand? He a God that hear it. That's why I read that in Isaiah 59. He said His ears, His arm not too short to save you, and His ears not too heavy to hear you crying to Him. But you gotta have patience, Israel. The Most High do defend us. Like I said, as long as you apply them, Lord, chapter commandments, if you sin, repent, and the Most High hear your cries, he'll hear your prayers, he'll hear your repentance, and he'll abundantly pardon you. Uh, read. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And right. Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of good courage, for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord has sworn unto thy fathers to give them. And thou shalt cause them to inherit it. So Moses reacted, and Moses, re Moses saying the same thing that the Heavenly Father was telling him. Moses just repeated what the Most High told him, he repeated it back to the people. Go ahead. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with Who thee. Who is going to go before them? The Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. The Lord going to go before you and fight for you. The Lord going to go before you and defend you. That's why we can't worry about these other nations. That's why we can't worry about how the wicked come at us because there is a God. There is a God in Israel. You understand? Who defend his people. Read. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee. Neither forsake thee. Fear not. Neither be dismayed. That's why we got to trust in the Lord because he will send his angels to fight. He will come fight before us. He will lead the way. You understand? We can't try to make things happen. We can't try to create things. We got to trust in the Lord because he will come defend you. You understand? That's what was wrong with us in Israel. We do not trust in the Lord like we say we do. We do not have faith like we say we do. Let me get um, uh, 2 Kings. Let me get 2 Kings uh, 19. 2 Kings 19, 32. I got a couple of more scriptures, and now I'm going to end it there. I'm going to have to make a part two, because I love this when I read about how the most High defend us, and we think we do things ourselves. What verse, Cap? 19, verse 32. Okay. The book of 2 Kings, chapter 19, verse 32. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come un into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shields. 
nor cast a bank against it. So Sennacherib was the king of Assyria, and he was threatening us. He said, I'm going to come shoot arrows. I'm going to tear Israel down. I'm going to tear Jerusalem down and make it dust. I'm going to kill everybody there. That's what he was saying. But once I said, no, no, no. He's not going to come do none of that. Don't worry about him. He's not going to shoot no arrows. He's not going to do this. He's not going to do that. Read. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return. Uh -huh. And shall not come into this city, saith the Lord. For I will defend this city to save it. He will do what? Read that. For I will defend this city the to Lord save said, it. The Lord said, I will defend this city. The most high protect us. The most high always been protecting us. That's why nobody can really come down on us like they want to. Because the most high been shielding us and protecting us all this time. You understand? This is real. This is real, y'all. Y'all got to stop playing games and trusting the Lord. If you say you really believe in the Lord, he always through the Bible say he'll defend us. Read that from 34 at the top. For I will defend this city to save it for mine own sake and, and for my servant David's sake. Uh-huh. And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians an hundred fourscore and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. He sent an angel down. One angel killed 185,000 men. One angel. That's why I said you can't play with the Lord. That night, the angel came in and went through the camp to kill 185,000 people. The death angel he sent down there. You know? You understand? Read. And Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. He just left him alone. He killed his whole army and just left him alone to go back and tell a story. That's how the most I get down. We dealing with a true and living God who don't play. We got to be sincere what we do. We got to be real about what we do. We can't be playing games and wishy-washy and up and down and you got a little faith here and sometimes you believe, sometimes you don't. You got to trust in the Lord and everything you do and he will defend you. Our God do defend us. Let me get one more in 2 Maccabees, uh, 1 Maccabees 7 and 42. We're going to talk about this Judas Maccabee talking about the same story we just read. Judas Maccabee talking about the same exact story we just read. First Seven Maccabee, and yeah, 40, 7 and 40. The book of First Maccabees, chapter 7, verse 40. But Judas pitched in Adassa with 3,000 men, and there he prayed, saying, O Lord, when they that were sent from the king of Assyrians blasphemed, thine angel went out and smote an hundred fourscore and five thousand of them. Hundred and eighty-five thousand of them. Go ahead. Even so, destroy thou this host before us this day. So he said, Lord, just the way you send the angel to kill 185,000 men, send the angel back to kill these enemies that's in front of us right now. Go ahead. That the rest may know that he has spoken blasphemously against thy sanctuary, and judge thou him according to his wickedness. So he said, come kill Nicanor and all of them. And they was the first, Nicanor was the first one that got slain out of the ones that was running their mouth. So he said, just like he did for the forefather and you protected them, please, Heavenly Father, come and defend us now and take care of our enemies. And that's the same prayer we got to today. Yeah. We're praying that the Most High fight for us in this walk. Because it's not an easy walk, but you got to keep your faith and trust in the Lord and he'll defend you, all right? With that, I'm going to close it out. I'm going to say shalom. Most High and Christ bless.
playing around saying that I'm a black man. I ain't saying that no more. It's our fault, man. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.